da da. This is um a kind of a roughly a, just an observation on what's happening within fashion, um and just generally a, the state of, mm, what's, yeah the state of fashion or just generally the um, what do they call it? What's the word? There's a word for it, right? When you just um when nothing impresses you, you just a little bit, you know, you're always in a constant. Uh, state of wanting to be impressed and I guess fashion people have always had that kind of reputation right they were kind of stuck up and have their nose in the air um, continuously nothing impresses them apart from you know he- um, old school helmet lang or whatever it may be there's, there's, there's a certain thing about it and you're seeing it raise ugly head with the news that Matthew Williams was you know um, was granted the position as artistic director or creative director for Givenchy he's um, luckily enough to have the position for both men's and women's which is going to be awesome to see I was at first I was nervous that he'd only get men's which would kind of limit his um vision would limit his ability to yeah maybe yeah would limit his ability to really showcase what he's about i think the i think in my opinion i think the reason why we got to see the best of matthew williams or the reason why we got to see matthew williams improve in such a short period of time was because initially he launched the brand as a women's brand right a- a- alix was essentially just a women's brand then it kind of expanded into doing men's. And I think because he came from it, from that POV, maybe using his wife as a muse or his wife's friends or their friends and their little crew, it allowed him to grow as a designer. I think there's something about being able to like, imagine if you were a designer for George Asda, right? Um, coming up as a kid and you just did an internship there after graduating from a prestigious fashion university at Central St. Martins. I think you would be a far better designer having spent two and a half years interning or being a design assistant at George Asda than you would be designing for some eclectic house somewhere. I think the ability to kind of make something outside of what you're used to, especially if you're like a, a wacky creative kid from Central St. Martins, is really going to marry up well with that experience. I think it's a good marriage. I think um, Matthew Williams doing essentially women's wear and then sort of, you know, um, expanding that into men's and then having the women, women's and men's be entirely different people that also live in the same universe. You know, sometimes when they did um, their, I forgot what they called them, when they when they did the, the shows where they had men and women walking the runway, you could tell that they were from the same sort of world but they had very different aesthetics different very different um cuts very different shapes textures feels all that sort of stuff so i like that they'd be giving him the opportunity to do men's and women's at Givenchy. anyway some people are just not happy some people will never be happy never be pleased and i guess fashion crews like that i guess matthew in this case this is a tweet that kind of sparked this rant um this guy tweeted who happens to be the editor of large at the m which is what a fashion magazine, I'm assuming, or Dem, sorry, some magazine, I don't know, Dem, we are everywhere, tag, and entertainment from nylon, freelance elsewhere, Dorian, blah, blah, blah. So he re- um, he made this tweet, this guy, and he said, um, I hate this entire Matthew Williams day one at Givenchy series so much, but the first picture is truly something else. He wants to be Moses part in the Red Sea so bad. And it's three pictures that Matthew Williams uploaded to his Instagram that were taken by Paolo uh, Ravosi, I'm pretty sure, who's doing most of the first sort of, you know, pictures um, that Givenchy are using very nicely done black and white images of you know Matthew Williams standing in front of his atelier um, walking across the street somewhere in Paris with I think members of Givenchy board or something and then him maybe you know walking around the uh, the studio or the office space that he's going to call home for the next for, for the foreseeable future so you know from just a naked point of view it's pretty cool right it's uh, it's somebody like Matthew Williams who knowing his history you know coming no, well if you know anything about Matthew Williams and where he's come from you would it's not surprising that he would be you know in awe at the position that he's at at the moment right he came you know if you just took a snapshot and say the person that was the third member of the band of ben trill is suddenly now the head of Givenchy. you would have never believed it back then right he was hanging out with travis scott and stuff and now look at the progression now look at the evolution so he's allowed to be excited right if this was the end goal if this was his plan anyway when he was making hats and djing and stuff and he had a goal of you know a lofty sort of stretch goal that oh maybe one day i could become a design assistant or i could maybe have a capture collection with the house essentially he's been given the keys to an historic house in in paris right to essentially bring them or drag them into the 21st century somehow be able to make uh products or skus that sell um all year round somehow capture the youth market reinvigorate um the the clientele they have at the moment it's a really exciting opportunity why shouldn't he be a bit cringe and do these essentially press shots that you know really serve to announce a transition and to kind of show everybody that there's a new chapter that they're about to enter into it's not a bad thing right it really isn't a bad thing i don't necessarily understand why fashion people just can't be happy 
right? They just can't be glad that somebody's getting it. But I think part of the reason why I think this is happening to Matthew is because it happened to coincide with obviously this whole Black Lives Matter movement, the protest um, after the untimely uh, death of George Floyd at the hands of the police. There is a kind of, I get a kind of feeling that they much would have, they, they would have rather had a black designer take over Givenchy just because, right? For tokenism's sake, because it would have fit this narrative. So he's kind of suffering from that, which is really unfair considering the amount of work he's done without even saying it out loud the amount of people he's put on within the black community who he's dressed even problematic characters like ian connor who he's essentially been he's stuck by and been a real friend to people like skepta like he's done a real a lot of good work in terms of the brand ambassadors that he uses on his even his runway yeah he's casting is fucking impeccable so to to kind of be out of order to him in this kind of moment where he sort of should be celebrating and enjoying this historic moment for himself and his family and his team it's just a little bit ugh. but again we shouldn't be surprised it's fashion right fashion people are never happy um they're the most cynical bunch in the world but again i don't see anything wrong with this i, I think virgil did the same thing when he got um appointed artistic director oh, when he got his role um for menswear at louis vuitton he did exactly the same thing he had his whole first day thing they did an entire documentary him talking to a louis vuitton team i remember that where they kind of blurred out all the mood balls that he was um working on like it's a thing that all big brands do why wouldn't they do it? it's a way to introduce like these and I, I know for some fashion peeps these brands are very close to your heart or you know you probably don't see them as big corporations as anyone else do but they are they're multi-million dollar sometimes billion dollar corporations that need to act in that way right they need to um, announce to their shareholders and announce to the market things are changing someone else is taking the reins i don't see anything wrong with it and again i'm not i'm not a fan of cringe but if you're going to be cringe it's going to be when you get a job like this right you should be allowed to be a little bit cringy when you get appointed the creative director of Givenchy for fuck's sake especially after you just used to design upside down new york yankees hats come on man come on anyway big up matthew williams anyway man you're doing you're doing a lot's work don't listen to the haters brother